ओके सो लेट्स अगेन कंटिन्यू आवर सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड वाइल सिस्टम डिजाइनिंग अगेन टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू मच बेसिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स वी शुड अवेयर ओके सो दीज प्रिंसिपल इफ वी फॉलो द कपल ऑफ प्रिंसिपल आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक बट स्योरली सिस्टम डिजाइन प्रिंसिपल ह्यूज लिस्ट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल स्योरली वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू टॉक इच एंड एवरी थिंग बट कपल ऑफ थिंग्स एज ए सिस्टम डिजाइनिंग we should aware so that while designing the system this help us and similarly once you you design the system and our uh, engineering team going to implement this system they can must follow and if you follow these systems our system uh, automatically you can say uh, goes in the phase where our uh, system are easily maintainable system are easily make a scalable system or easily make a uh, you can say uh, fault tolerant and everything so whatever the basic uh, uh, characteristics of any system would be so scalability availability and your uh, fault tolerance all the things uh, would be uh, by default uh, uh, you can say added more accurately in the system if uh, we follows uh, such uh, simple designs very very simple okay so let's talk one so if you talk about system designs principles so these are some design principles first about this uh, dry principle so what we dry don't repeat yourself that means a white duplicate code logic functionality so generally uh, as a software engineering whenever you are going to write the code and if you find there are some business logic some code available couple of lines i need again so first tendency let's copy and paste again the same code same code in a baby same code and after that i am going to add my more logics or maybe i want to give some modification in this line so first uh, by default tendencies of the engineer they are copy the code and paste somewhere and again going to reduce okay and um, this is not just for the particular maybe one file many many places we finds while the code reviewing hey one file already contain some specific method and similar method in the different files i am going to write unnecessary but might be we are not aware or might be i want some kind of different input or something so generally what say we just maybe duplicate or maybe copy paste code. so objective this principle is that first whatever they going to code write you should aware what the already uh the particular function the particular business logic already exists in my system okay so instead of copy and paste and similar quotes that pop, you can uh, paste in multiple places so what are the problems in future in future some one going to the change this particular lines might be they missed to the changing this file might be that they missed missed to the changing this file okay so while the implementation it's good it's very easy just copy paste code and do modification it's okay fine but whenever code deployed in the production and some new change require request come or some defect come and developer finds say hey, this is the place where i have to fix it code and they fix it they test it it's uh, it's functionality work fine and they again release the production but some other use case some other functionality are now going to the not working as per the new changes might be the developer which finding out the code problem in the particular files they are not aware the same code may be written here may be written here maybe lots of file so this is our code quality become going down and multiple kind of defects we are found 
So what are the things? What are the wood? Uh, the best way. Best way you can try to reuse the code. Maybe just step out this code and maybe write some separate utility and function and tell them, hey, just use this code from here. You can also code is from here. This code is from here. Okay. So somehow, if any uh, use case, any functions where the particular defect at particular enhancement, particular improvement comes, and you go, hey, this is a code I need to change. Oh, this code is already used from a specific file, and you can just do the improvement here, and all kind of improvements is implemented across the files. Okay. So this principle is very very kind of basics, but we ensure while the building the code or while the guiding our junior try to put the particular version of logic and you think that can be reusable don't try it in your same the code flow where the your business logics of workflow as data flow going on are a specific functionality you are implementing and you are thinking this functionality might be the bigger generic and that can be uh, use in the many many our business workflow maybe many many business workflow so you, maybe you can think before writing any code in a specific workflow to write a specific workflow and you are writing some generic code some generic utility some generic function and you are thinking that can be reusable just extract out from here and write the separate class and good option whatever the editor you are using even you don't uh, uh, need to more works just use the editor like IntelliJ editor or any editor you are using id using they help you just just select the code hey this is a selected code i want to extract out from this and i want to generate separate function a separate method a separate class just extract out and put in the separate file and so that this separate class maybe utility class a business class that can be used in a separate separate files okay so this is the uh, you can say first each and every developer we have to ensure that while writing implementing any new business logic or any new functionality and just thinks this code or this business logics can possible may make a generic if make a generic it's good so that in future this code can be reused so what are the code you are writing let's first so question is that how generally we are going to write the code generally first my observation don't think you are going to write code generic first let's think what the huge case you are going to solve what is the business logic we are going to solve let's solve first the basic simple way whatever the you know whatever the basic loop and later part you refactor this code hey this refactoring code can be make a more generic more uh, uh use uh, maybe uh used by the multiple places maybe reduce the code maybe uh, uh, nowadays lots of tools available you can refactor the code make generic and make a very concise and make as more documented so in future someone can read it so step by steps okay so in this way if your teams are going to the follow this principle lots of utility lots of generic function you are going to use and those generic functions are used by the different different business logic different different components and in this way we are generally avoiding any new engineer comes hey this is the general utility we guide them hey these are set of general utility general function available if you are going to implement something let's look this library let's look this utility uh, package and if something according to your function already exists just reuse them don't copy paste code again again don't write the same generic logic for you okay so let's try to use this uh, principle do not repeat yourself means avoid duplicate code avoid copy paste next also very as we discuss whenever you are going to write a code in a generic so that in future someone can use the so generic codes are simple codes you can say so first things whenever you receive some kind of a use case hey 
this is the business requirement i want to this do this 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 i am taking input in this kind of things i want to output this kind of things it's okay the first approach what i say just do very simple way just use very simplest uh, logics to complete achieve your goals so whatever your goal we have whatever the logics you are going to implement let's go very simple step by step number one step number two step number three step number four step number five step number six okay and let's implement your first object and let's test this code whatever i'm written is it meet my objective or not once you are written this code it's meet objective maybe simple for loop simple while loop maybe many many codes that may be refactor and after that you write the test cases you write your test cases hey lots of test cases case number one case number two case number three positive test case negative test case corner case test case everything you can write test and again run if your all tests are passing with a simple code which are written maybe someone review your code hey can you refactor them can you optimize them but first instance don't do let's go with a very simple code just write them once you've written them and write their test cases and all the test cases scenario must be passed uh, your uh, positive scenario means what the expected input output does it what does negative scenario what may be validation error or something maybe some corner cases positive negative higher less than rare scenario all test cases written then commit the current test and later parts you think later part is come think and here can you think this i can refactor the code i can optimize the code i can use the different some library existing i can avoid the some manual for loop i can use the some stream api i can use the some lambda function just and just change something and again run your test if your test pass all the scenario that means your refactor works fine the first approach let's go your business logic your code as simple as possible favor simplicity over the complexity as sim as a simpler system are easy to understand maintain and extend Okay. so we keep many many times as a uh, when we become a senior or we have a number of experience so generally we are going to write code as complex so that i can understand but think whenever you are writing code one times this code written by you might be you can understand really what the business logic what the things you written it's very nice it works but notice you written now and this code is read by many many years by the different different engineer and if your code is somehow complex somehow uh, uh, very hard to read or very visualize one kind of loop loop under another loop for inside another for inside another loop lots of complex logic you written okay that's good you can understand but now you are writing rights program one time but read by the many many times many many years so uh, our objectives as a software engineer we are writing code just okay and then refactor them and make as simple as simple someone read your code someone read your code and after reading by line by line line by line line by line, line, they can understand you are doing this so how it's possible you are writing code like a story reading so any java every java language or any programming language have a very logical way whenever you are giving any variable name variable name should be more descriptive so that someone read variable name understand why this variable name is going to define and whatever the business logic you are writing this three line of code written and you know the intention three line for the simple calculation so just extract out this code in a particular method and give the logically your method name Okay, my third name so if you can put uh, extract out your set of line of code and give the logical name hey this three line of code for solving a specific case and once first time you write everything in a one okay that's a later part you can refactor and give this 
थ्री लाइन ऑफ कोड कैन बी सिंपल वन मैथड मैथड इज द प्लेस वी आर डेवलपर है ऑप्शन गिव द मीनिंगफुल नेम एंड इवन समन रीड द मैथड नेम दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस मैथड नेम टेक दिस इनपुट एंड कैलकुलेट दिस ऑन द बेस ऑफ दिस मैथड नेम इज आल्सो बी केयर एज डिस्क्रिप्टिव एज पॉसिबल इफ यू आर राइटिंग सोच सो ऑल दिस मैथड नेम इज मोर डिस्क्रिप्टिव समन रीड योर मैथड नेम एंड दे कैन इजीली अंडरस्टैंड दिस कोड इज वेरी अंडरस्टैंडेबल the preferences way your code as simple so that everyone as a junior engineer as a senior engineer can understand don't go more level of loop loop inside loop inside loop inside loop go inside if inside if. you can just customize make the separate separate small small methods i use those methods and method name should be more descriptive so that anyone can can anyone can read and understand your code so it help us to our code easily maintainable in future or something new change come in future our system easily can integrate so this is also very thumb rule whenever you are going to write any business logic any code let's make it simple that means just think you are not only the engineer we are going to maintain this code your code is now maintained by the couple of years by the different different engineer if you think in your mind such way while writing the code you are writing code as simple so that anyone can read and understand what the written okay so many many sometime uh, developer have a confusion if you are writing code simple it meter performance or if i am writing code so complex can increase the performance this is a very very myth don't go it is there is no any hard rule if you are writing very complex code that means it is the increase your performance if you are writing a simple code that means it cannot meet the performance simple code also get the same performance which you are writing the complex code okay we we learn the strategy we learn the uh, principle you learn the uh, guidelines of the any language java language or uh, programming language that make us to write simple code simple code can be written using the variable name is more descriptive and method name as many number of method possible you can write your code your business logics of any method line as minimum number of line as you can give man each line maybe one liner some if condition if a less than greater than and or this and all by will this condition someone cannot easily understand ki what is the meaning of less than and greater than and or this condition while writing business code you know this condition i am written for the uh, checking particular calculation or particular business rule just you make one line separate method and give the logical name possibly you try to write your method as a small number of line as possible and give the logical name of method and this method is one more benefit if you writing method as a small as a small it will help us to reuse those those method in different different places as well as we'll talk so this is the some rule through which you can write very simple code and this is simple is the rule to make understand and it is help for your future meet the system designs uh ethics system design principles okay so let's uh, uh, one more very basic principle that's one yagni yagni principle say we have to avoid some avoid adding feature or complexity that may or not currently needed so sometime whenever we are uh, going to design some api or design some function let's say i'm going to dpi uh, initially define uh, going to define api so once initial time i think maybe uh, for the future use cases uh, this api needed this api needed this api needed this api needed. 
all the crud needed all the get api multiple filter needed multiple update needed bulk update needed just initially nowadays developer have a lots of experience and developer have worked multiple multiple projects and they have no let someone say hey, divine design this api so use case is just say hey this is now needed okay this api needed but due to the uh, uh, your uh, experience engineer they was like they think hey in future also customer can need customer can need customer can need okay and after that they are going to the build lots of code and it's good it's good but notice engineers are invested some time here and customer currently just using one feature this is a feature one api one code that's great but notice in future you implemented this code and customer say hey i not need yeah maybe i need this but different way i don't want to this way so what happened you as an engineer you are investing lots of feature that currently maybe our production our customer not needed maybe in future needed customer maybe need future so if anything you think our current system currently customer is not demanding not expecting just avoid to implementing as of now you release the code that really customer needed once in future customer want this feature at that time you design those feature and again ship them so as my personal experience many many places we are defining lots of api might be this api in future might be all the api not needed by the customer not needed by ui some one or two are needed unnecessary we are implemented lots of api lots of code that is never needed but still we are invested our times our energy and focus okay so this principle say let's uh, focus on the customer current need if i am shipping my application shipping my product in my current product what's the things i committed so this basic feature or this feature must exist those feature you can deliver unnecessary code unnecessary feature you don't add until customer is not demanding maybe you added two days and after a couple of months a couple of refinement customer say i want this feature but not this way i want to refactor them so maybe today you get the requirement you are starting mobility after maybe two months or three months or one year two year customer say i now this feature i want but not the world old way the way you implemented i want the different way so even might be say hey this feature is never needed i don't want initially i'm thought in this uh, coming uh, uh, one sprint or two sprint this feature required but now as per the current market current industries current domain requirement there is no such feature required so until customer is not going to use those feature don't implement this will save us lots of engineer times and whatever you committing those things engineer focus and release to the customer so this is also very simple principle but they help us to save lots of engineer times and now this time engineer save they can focused to those area where customer really needed those things we can improve the better quality and better test so let's talk one more principle uh, that is the whenever you are going to designing system that systems are going to depend upon the different different components okay so somehow we are going to uh, work on a multiple component or multiple classes and maybe these uh, components may be related to these other or somehow need to access and somehow need to call them so at that times we are going to make a relationship between them a uh, while making relationship between the different different component different different object or different different services a different different modules you can say so those relationship generally uh, last class we receive two kind of relationship your relationship can be tight couple or or you can say loose couple so this design principle suggest if possible your two modules yeah multiple modules are making relationship and that relationship 
if possible let's choose the loose coupling loose coupling is your relationship your bonding your dependency as loose possible if there is no other way then you can go your tight uh, coupling your tight relationship study and the last class in the oops principle we discuss coupling can be a uh, two kind of thing coupling coupling may be your uh, tight coupling and your loose coupling so this principle say prefer loose coupling so in last class we discuss right tight coupling means uh, we the implementing is a relationship and that is an inheritance and uh, loose coupling say hey you are going to make a relationship but not a easy relationship we are going to the higher relationship and has a relationship and that means composition or aggregation if possible your multiple modules or multiple components are maybe interacted to each other if possible that's go with the loose coupling so if we are minimize our dependency between the components if possible you can minimize if really needed make a loose so make it easier to modify or replace the individual component without affecting the entire system if your something change in this module that if this is a very hard a very tight relationship tight coupling might be they are replicating the another models another models and one changes maybe uh, uh, disturb or maybe uh, raise the lots of uh, difficult so bug a maintainability issue in the multiple model model maybe you are changing one module and uh, that will going to impact the model 3 model 5 model 6 and once you are changing one you have to test all the model refactor all the module modify the all the test cases of all the modules why because you are integrated make a dependency very tight to each other okay so this is the thumb rule if possible whenever you are going to make a relationship between the two component two module two object two classes think we can go with the loose coupling that means composition aggregation something association if possible let's do and there are lots of lots of way where modules are dependent to each other as a loose couple and even first objective let's try to minimize if possible without making relationship we can achieve this functionality let's do if really required to dependency let's do dependency as less as loose that means your components in future i want to replace this component to the new component you can really replace because the relationship is very loose the loose relationship what say so these are the components are uh, integrated are relation related to each other and you have met a loose couple relationship and you want to this feature maybe you want to replicate and you want to introduce the new component they can easily integrate with the new so if your relationship is very hard you are changing something here this is also impacting this is very hard we cannot replace the this uh, old component with a new component right so b thinks whenever you are going to design or system that are different different module different different packages different classes and you want to make a communication between that your relationship between that you want to access some dependency so those dependency should be minimum and if you want to really do let's go to the loose company that means you go to the association composition aggregation like thing don't go like a inheritance a very tight couple of relationships so this help us in future if a new, new algorithm come or a new kind of a design pattern come new uh, technology come uh, your new database come you decide to change the database each when the did uh, change the particular uh, uh, payment model uh, change the particular abcd model your services you can really do because your uh, higher level components are not tightly depend upon your lower level model so lower level can easily replace with the new uh, newer uh, sub uh, systems so objective here is the loose coupling that loose coupling help us if your uh, one modules are dependent to the different different modules okay different different module so different different modules are dependent and if this dependence if you are changing something you are modifying something and there is a, must be no impact on this models if in future if they are very tight coupling if you're changing something here 
all are the impacted all are the impacted that means you have a very tight relationship tight coupling between that if we have prefer the loose relationship here that means this component can be easily replaced or in future new mo uh, model we can easily integrate because they are not uh, our uh, this uh, uh, higher level of uh, models is not really depend upon the lower in future let's say i want to discontinue this model i don't want so this is independently we can associate it or if needed we can discard it so these things uh, help us in future our system is more uh, you can say adaptable in future something new come we can adopt our system is extendable in future someone want to replace the particular algorithm you implemented here i want to change the new algorithm let's see i build the new algorithm system and, and integrate with here i will just discarded this so loose coupling uh, help us to make the communication between the different different module different different services different different subsystem that's easily let's talk about the similarly uh, we support loose coupling and similarly we have to ensure that our component should be follow the high cohesiveness what do you mean by cohesiveness the component should be self contained and focus for a specific task or functionality making it easier to understand and maintain so whenever you are going to define any modules or any services or any uh, classes or any uh, particular packages so please be sure that this particular modules is serve the specific purpose only or a specific functionality you can say they are not going to uh, serve or offer multiple feature if you let's see this is the one module uh, they can only serve the hey uh, adding the but increasing the volume or adding the login or log out or authentication authorization lots of functionality so each module each object is responsible to serve the specific purpose or is specific one task you can say one functionality you can say so that this can be uh, easily used by the different different places and due to that your uh, relationship also can be minimized can be changed so the same uh, principle relationship also should be loose and accordingly the component from where you are making relationship the component should be a very specific uh, purpose component your module your package your object should be going for the specific function not more maybe you can say they can only serve the only one purpose they are not going to serve multiple purpose okay that's example you are writing implementing one gate and this gate have a intricate lots of people are coming here okay intricate and the same thing you can say hey same gate can be used for the exit as well as so what happened many people are coming here at same time they are going to try out lots of confusion lots of problem so why not say two gate one for your input entry in exit and one for your out entry so that only exit is going here here out uh, one inside going here here out going here similarly like login functionality a logout functionality yeah generally whenever i write the api we have a create update delete something so we have to ensure that uh, maybe add account withdrawal account debit something or increase decrease something whatever the customer uses let's figure out and for each specific task each specific function we have to write our modules so here this principle say our class our module as cohesive means they serve only specific tasks or function even you are writing one class let's ensure that you are exposing multiple method don't expose multiple method if all methods are related to a specific one topic yeah one task it's okay you cannot merge in this one but in a, any language in a one class you can write multiple business logic multiple method it's okay compiler allow but we have some couple of designs issue if you are going to uh, use the only uh, one class and serve the multiple purpose so our objective whenever you define any class please ensure that whatever the method you are exposing whatever the function you are exposing that function would be specific maybe you can create multiple classes multiple module it's okay because they are very cohesive are uh, very task uh, dependent very functional dependent it's okay you 
you can use this task in different different places okay so our systems or modules are very loosely coupled and the same time they are more cohesiveness cohesiveness means you can divide your module your class as many number of small as small so due to that whenever whenever we are going to the follow the cohesiveness cohesiveness say hey this is the one module and they have a couple of functionality functionality one functionality two functionality three so only one module can expose this functionality now cohesiveness say hey this is class or this is module is not cohesive then let's build the separate this is the for a task this is for b task and this is for three task even you can see so now you extract out out and out and out now you can build the three so whenever you're going to design system cohesiveness means separate separate function separate separate each task now we need a relationship now we are going to make a relationship how they are going to talk here okay so while talking you have to also prefer to lose coupling so whenever you're going to design system highly cohesive they increase the possibility to make a coupling relationship between that and uh, while deciding the relationship ensure that your relationship coupling as those don't make a the tight coupling if pos if possible some sometimes some situation hey there is no way other than a tight coupling let's do because there is no uh, you can say tight coupling is very bad not depend upon the, if possible you can implement the different approach different way let's go with the different way so these are your uh, high coupling uh, loose, low coupling loose coupling and high cohesiveness high cohesiveness is the root for your making the different different modules and component and that time required the relationship coupling that should be low so let's talk more so whenever you are going to de decide it hey, i am going to make a, our system more highly cohesive means each module each class each function for a specific purpose that is known as a separation of concerns so whenever you are going to break down your systems or use case or system requirement as small as so whatever the requirement you have just break down in the smaller to as a smaller independent component and each component or each modules are responsible to for specific concerns or functionality so this separation of concerns is the also one of the principle they promote they say hey let's go with the our system high consciousness means ki whatever the you are going to define the classes or define going to the packages define go to the modules define go to the services class level package level module level and even service level this all the things should be responsible to serve only a specific concerns a specific function a specific use case if we are following this separation of concerns each concerns each business each requirement would be the separate microservice separate package module separate class level you have to think class level separation package level separation module level separation even the service level separation and if you are going to do this separations this help us to this principle reduce the complexity and improve the maintainability but this principle if you are following our application is so maintainable because in future this is the new module new module new packages you can easily replace you can easily test you can easily modified you can easily replace with them because these are not very tightly bound to the one bigger system so these are the very very you can say specific uh, designs uh, while reading the customer use cases please read out hey this is the one use cases this is one independent concern this is a different functionality different different just note it out and accordingly you can break down your requirements so these are the not uh, uh, last or uh, design principle lots of principle we have not going to cover everything so the objectives whenever you want to design systems whatever the principle you follow maybe you are following the dry principle a uh, simple principle yagni principle high cohesiveness 
लूज कपलिंग योर सपरेशन ऑफ कंसर्न वट एवर यू डूइंग दैट्स गुड बट ऑब्जेक्टिव वट एवर थिंग्स यू आर गोइंग टू डू वट एवर सिस्टम योर सिस्टम इन कैन बी फोकस आर सच वे सो दैट दे कैन कंटिन्यूस स्को फॉर इंप्रूवमेंट यू कैन नॉट डिजाइन सिस्टम दैट इज वेरी रेजिडनेस यू कैन नॉट इंप्रूव दिन यू इंप्रूव दिन इवन वट एवर द मॉड्यूल्स आर फंक्शन आर क्लास यू आर डूइंग दैट मस्ट बी योर refactorable means your system can be refactor you can replace the particular algorithm you can replace the particular module you can change the particular code you can easily test them you can easily write the more test cases so our code our system should be continuous refactorable and similarly whatever writing the particular business logic we have option we have a scope we can easily optimize them you can easily change them you can easily change the algorithm you can easily add the more uh, use cases so if uh, our system the way you are designing system that have a lot of scope for your improvement uh, accept your change accept your designs accept your change the algorithm all the things like uh, and once we follow all these designs principle lots of designs that help us our designs our system is more scalable more performant more availability this can be fault tolerant maintain the security parameter which are the very very uh, top level uh, design principle those only possible if we follow the very basics core design principle which we discussed today if you following this the basic principle your system automatically become scalable automatically be well availability ch high availability fault tolerant you can uh, security you can performant testability all are the bigger design principle like uh, scalability fault tolerant availability performant security these are the things if you you follow these basic principle now after that whatever you building system those system can easily become scalable easily maintainable easily adaptable easily uh, maintain the uh, what are the security parameter easily meet the customer performance so these are the very very basics but this basics help to meet the meet the high level system designs your system architecture architecture point of view functional and non functional requirement if while designing systems we meet we uh, follow this principle by default our system become kind of a more uh, easily way we can achieve our non performance non performance requirement and nfr okay and while working with a basic core demand uh, functional requirement whatever the functional requirement we have a whatever functional requirement we have a if the functional requirement while implementing while designing we follow this design principle this design principle help us to meet all the nfr nfr basically your system should be scalable your system should be available your system should be fault tolerant your system should be easily maintain the security parameter compliance issue this nfr we can easily implement we can easily integrate if we follow the basic uh, designs principles and guidelines so these are the very basic basic things but this help us to meet our complete uh, non nfr requirement which customer not tell us our system should be available highly available our system should be scalable our system should be uh, fault tolerant our system should be testable our system should be um, uh, apply the all the re rules regulation and compliance so these things easily integrate on the top of our system if we build our system design our system with these basics basic oops principle oops guidelines and these are the our uh, design principle okay so let's uh, uh, look these uh, principle this principle help us and we as a system designer as a software engineer our responsibility we should aware this principle okay thank you for watching this